Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always, and today we are joined by Marcy Locke. And I first met Marcy when she was speaking at one of Brandon Hawk's U training events, and she was just so full of energy, I was in awe. She had such a commanding presence, she really knew how to speak to a large group of people, and she did a fantastic job of inspiring us, motivating us, and making the events feel special. Afterwards, we connected at a different conference in Vegas, one where once again Marcy set the pace and really led by example. She wasn't on stage, though. It was a sales training event, and Marcy was either number one or number two in the sales in the room. Um, what did you hit, Marcy? I know you broke five figures. Was uh, it a six-figure day? No, yeah, I did, all, I did over 100000 They said that I, uh, I broke the record, so but I, was out in the, I was out in the hall for so many people when they said that. <laughs> yeah, it was impressive. It was impressive. Your personality, your vibe, your energy, her good looks and charm. I know at at that point I was like, who is this girl? So while I found out that Marcy is a seven-figure business owner, she's known worldwide as the body, mind, mentor, and the game changer for teaching people how to get their rock and body of health and ultimate life. She's crushing it as a nutrition, fitness, mindset expert, and transformation mentor. She's appeared on TV around the world and hosts her own TV and radio show. She also speaks globally and is a best-selling author. Marcy is passionate about changing lives by breaking down the barriers to get and keep breakthrough results. Her unique lock formula implements all components through her programs, books, kick-ass events, and regular Marcy Lock influential TV show. She has touched and transformed thousands of lives through her mind-body breakthrough program, her goddess revolution experience, her badass breakthrough adventure series, and her corporate wellness programs. Marcy lives in Southern California, a little south of me in Solana Beach, with her two amazing boys, seizing life in every moment and living in alignment with her purpose and passion. You can download the Marcy Lock app for free on iTunes at marcylockapp.com to get a free workouts, recipes and breakthrough tips. Follow her daily uh, you can also follow her daily inspiration on Facebook and get a free video series at mindbody9090.com. She is a phenomenal mom and a great connector between people. She's a bright light on a cloudy day and someone you can count on, or at least she's been that for me. So I asked her to come here today and share with us some of her business wisdom. If there's any secrets to building a seven-figure business, Marcy knows them. Benign, a benign point, but it's not. It's it's small hinges swing big doors, and I think that that's really, really, really important. Um, the people that accomplish things like at the highest level, they love what they do. One of my favorite quotes about mastery in anything is do it until it becomes dull and then keep doing it until it's beautiful. And I think that that's, that indicates, right, like that where you find like love and passion and like we just, we're talking about a creative, a creative joy with what you're doing. So, and yeah. that's the type of thing. And I, I think that's even it. We forget like, cause we, we take so much for granted, but there are so many, like the fact that we're out of the food chain, like that's phenomenal that we're the only mm-hmm. creatures on the planet that don't have to worry about something else eating us. And, you know, but we take that for granted and, you know, we complain about our TV shows, but that's something that we were capable of doing. Because, right, because we, like you said, we're all powerful. And I mean, everything, like cell phones. If I told you 15 years ago that I would be able to open up a portal in my hand and talk to someone real time and see them on the other side of the world, you'd think I was crazy. But we don't know what we can't do. We just keep doing it. But the problem, like what you're mentioning, is you can't really do it when you're, when you're, when you're, your fight or flight instincts are up, you know, when yeah. You're, yeah, when your hairs are up on the back of your neck and you're for worried about just survival, that's like a, it's almost like a hoarding mentality. And so you're not really creating anything. You want to keep it yeah. and you can't, the harder you squeeze something that you want, the, the easier it gets away. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's really, really, really Well, and powerful. think about, you had said, how do you make it fun and easy? And remember, we just talked about how perceptions create your possibilities. So you see how eating a perception of I should do this, I have to do this. It, does, it, it shuts down your possibilities when you're like, oh, I get you. When you recognize you're in choice always, always, you're in choice. Uh-huh. You don't have to do something. You get to if you want to. But see, there's a totally different energy behind, oh, I get to do this. Like, uh-huh. I get to make these sales calls. And, like, how do you perceive it? Like, oh, I get to connect with people who are, like, looking for the value I have to deliver. Uh-huh. And I'm excited to, to see what's going on with them and how I can serve them and what we get to create together instead of, like, oh, my gosh, I have to get on this sales call. If I don't do this, I'm going to... You know, I'm not going to be able to feed my family and, and all this shit when it shows up. It's like, uh, eh, you're right, like contraction. And so but this is an interesting point that um, I feel like would be really valuable for your your peeps to hear, Daryl, is your body will never lie. Your, your body will literally tell you what's going on. So I had talked about just like your body will shut down and contract the moment you feel fear. So I can be talking to someone and I can be like, what? so I'll give you an example story that's super powerful. 
Um, I've had uh, my, one of my three-day shred, uh, you know, beach experiences, like, you know, staying retreats going on. And I had one of my clients with the same fitness guy in the UK who was over so I could teach him how to do retreats. And that morning, I felt this inspiration to kind of just take them down somewhere else and work out the group. And we were on the stairs working out. And after, this guy comes up to us, to me, my, my fitness, you know, buddy that um, is learning from me. And he's like, hey, yeah, I, I injured myself. And he's like, I was watching you guys. And was like, holy cow, what kind of training is that? What are you doing? And and because I do some crazy stuff. It's awesome. It's super effective. <laughs> and my my fitness buddy, my client, it's like family, right? Because that's mm-hmm. all the only people I attract. Mm-hmm. He instantly starts jumping in. And he's like, oh, do you want training? Blah, blah, blah. And instantly, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just said you had an injury. Where, where, you know, you know, what's your injury? And he's like, oh, Achilles tendon. I'm like, right or left side of the body. He's like, you know, right side. I'm like, oh, interesting. And I said, it, you know, are you trying to make a big decision in life right now that you're really having a hard time moving forward with? Does that resonate? And this guy is uh, an older gentleman who's like super fit. Um, he was a, a Navy still or something in the Navy. He's broken all these records. He comes across a super hardcore type warrior guy, like really stern, like. That, that that Navy guy that you're like, he's not going to smile or budge. He's just kind of like very solid, right? Mm-hmm. And he comes over very solid. And the moment I asked him that question, he instantly just like shoulders and body dropping just started to cry. Like, and, and like he just dropped, he's like, how did you know that? And I'm like, well, your body just told me what's going on. And I asked him a couple questions about the emotions going on inside him that led to that showing up as a physical symptom. And he's just bawling in my arms. And within two minutes, this guy goes from, you know, hardcore, hey, show me the kind of training you're doing, to bawling in my arms about, because his deep internal emotions is what created that symptom, and it told me everything about where he was blocked in life, why he was creating the results that he had. So, so this is the deal, is your body will also, will manifest things, to, because their core emotions are, are connected to it. And it's as simple as, when you start to understand there's five core emotions, and if you're feeling anything in your chest, it's sadness. If you're feeling it in your stomach, it's fear. If you're feeling it in your head, neck, or shoulders, it's anger. Um, joy is kind of all through your body, and obviously sexual feelings are in your pelvis area. So, how, what, you know, these simple things that can assist people in seeing what their thoughts are, what their fears are, what their blocks are with, you know, some of the basic things in providing and creating money or et cetera. So, like, I have a, a, a client who's a famous doctor, and one day as I'm, you know, breaking into her, she had an experience at work, and she was really upset and emotional about it. And I said, well, what are you feeling in your body? She says, I'm feeling it in my chest. I'm like, okay, sadness. I said, thinking about this issue, what could you really be, what are you really sad about? And the thought that came up for her was, I don't trust myself. So we tracked this back to when she was two years old and she peed on the floor as a toddler. Wow. As a toddler, she pees on the floor. Her And we all do with toddlers learning the potty training. Her dad said something to her that she chose in that moment, just like I chose in those moments when I was four. What, you know, based off what my mom said, I chose decisions that framed my life. She chose, oh, I'm fundamentally flawed. I don't trust my body. And that stemmed into I don't trust myself. I don't think I'm good enough. So her whole life, you can see how she created seeing the evidence of I'm not good enough. Or I'm not, I don't trust myself in, in relationships. I don't trust myself in business. I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself. Hmm. So now, now that she's aware of that, she's like broken that block. Every time it gets triggered, she's like, oh, you have to try That's so silly. Like we make life so hard on ourselves. And you see it through this life of like, so silly, those stories we chose and believed that made our lives so hard, instead of like, what if we all chose to believe, Daryl, that business and success is so easy? Because I have this value to give, and there's billions of people, and there's so many people out there that are looking for the value that I have to give, they're coming to me every single day. Like, if we knew that, if, that, if we believe that, it'd be easy, right? So mm-hmm. we have these beliefs of like, oh, money's hard, and it's a sacrifice, and, you know, it's going to take a lot of work, or change is hard, or I have to sacrifice this, and... All these bullshit stories we tell ourselves is what's really keeping us from creating awesomeness. Instead, when we get clear with that and we're just conscious. So I feel like the biggest thing that's happening is we're not conscious. So people think they're, you know, it's like there's actually four stages of life. I feel like this is really important for your people to feel. There's the first stage, which I talk about as a child. You're like, oh, life happens as me. You're just like present, right? You're running around as a kid. You're in moment by moment. You're like, I'm jumping on the chair. I'm running around the grass. Like, <laughs> life happens as me. <laughs> then what happens is we get a little bit older and we start to feel like forced. I mean, it's like, you're going to the babysitter. We're going here. We're doing this. And all of a sudden you're like, you feel out of control. So a lot of us tend to take on that, you know, victimhood persona and, and just like seeing life as like, it looks like this. Right? Mm-hmm. And if we choose to become conscious and we choose to start to become aware and do this, 
game of, of, of you know, um, being a creator and self-empowerment, we realize life happens from me. I'm the creator of my world. Life happens from me. But Daryl, most people stop there. Most mm. stop there. And there's actually a whole other level that I believe even... So I, I said earlier 99% are um, spectators and participants. 1% are creators. I believe 1% of the 1% know what it's like to live in this total alignment where they don't live in a belief system of either this or this. It's a belief system of and. I can have this and this and this and this. And they're aligned to their, their self that what happens is they're in the space of life happens through me. Mm-hmm. It's so easy and effortless that like they're divinely guided. Like they can, you know, ever, like they're effortlessly receiving the people and effortlessly receiving the ideas and inspiration. And life is just flow. Mm-hmm. Flow state. So when we're in that place, when we're in that flow state, then we're truly in the place of like, it's easy and it's effortless. And what if we all believe that? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's a great question. If we all believe that. I mean, I think more people will be having more confidence because again, people, this stuff shows up in the most absurd ways. And that was one for me, you know, I've, I don't know. I'd like to think I'm somewhere on this ladder, but the reality is, is I, you know, I don't know what I don't know. But I, I remember, like, I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to rub elbows with the rich and famous, and also sleep on mud floors and mud huts with the poor. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to be going back to Africa soon for ten days to do do it again. But um, I feel like at all levels, like in boardrooms and high powered CEOs and that, this, this stuff comes out. These things that you're talking about, people holding their emotions mm-hmm. in certain parts of their body, them uh, psyching themselves out, or them making things harder than they have to be because they're expecting or anticipating something to be a certain way. And we don't really know. Like, that's something that I think, um, like, I know you've traveled a lot, and I think that's one of the reasons why people love travel so much is that it allows you to, to, to develop a new perspective of yourself and even your culture and like your family and you know and it's just and, and it's a way to just all of a sudden now you have something to compare it against and that comparison gives you perspective but when people don't have and like you said they're the victim they feel like they're forced and out of control they never get out of that phase they have very you know stern parents and they grow up being told of everything they have to do and they should do this should do that you know maybe they go and they have success in the corporate world but you know, they're always limited because they can only do what they're forced to do, right? Because they stay in that victim mentality. They didn't ever step up to being creators of their own worlds or to achieve mm-hmm. this flow state you've been talking about. So I think this is really relevant. You know, mindset, I think, is a, a, a definitely a big part of it. It's not the whole enchilada, but it's definitely a key part. Again, I'm a huge fan of Think and Grow Rich and 13 Principles. And I can really see in you and just even anyone that's listening to this in your energy and how you carry yourself – you know, you really are in step and in, in alignment with, with your purpose and with your passion, and it just shines through and you glow. And so that's that's really, 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 really powerful. So so the first one was the child when you're in the present. The second stage was when you're a victim, and that's not so much because you are a victim, but it's that stage where you're kind of being... Um, um, I don't want to say escorted everywhere, but you got your parents are, mm-hmm. you know, you're under someone else's control. Your parents are dictating mm-hmm. a lot of your life, but you never really have that right of, if you don't have that right of passage where suddenly you feel like you're now the creator of your own life, you can get stuck feeling like a victim. So let's just make it simple. If you're in a sabotaging pattern or you're not feeling good, this is red flag. Look at what's going on, go inside. So step one is what am I feeling? What am I feeling? Oh, well, why? So step two, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? So instead of like, ah, oh, okay, so third question, and this is the game changer, because we can, awareness won't do shit for you if you just stay in awareness. Awareness is awesome, but awareness, everybody's aware that they sabotage, that they're sabotaging in some form of what, what's going on. The, the challenge I see is that society doesn't know how to change it. Mm. We just stay in awareness, right? Mm-hmm. So great to know what am I feeling and why am I feeling this way? That's awareness, but it doesn't do anything for you until you do this. So step three is what do I want? So it's like, well, what do I want? I want this. So now my mind is focusing on what I do want, not what I don't want or what I'm in, right? Not the right. circumstance. What I want. And then it's like, so the next step would be, well, what's my new belief? And there's things to this. Like, you can be like, if I, if I recognize that, um, you know, the belief might be like, well, I'm getting judged. If I do this, I'm going to get judged. It's like, well, is that really true? And so I'm saying there can be some deeper clarity and processing here to help people go, oh, that's not even true. Well, what I want, I want this. So now... Step four, what's my new belief or perception? And it's shifting to the belief or perception that you are. What's that new belief or perception that you want to be your experience? 
Right. The money flows in easily, that whatever it is, right? And right. then what's the action number five is what's the action you're gonna take. Mm. So we always get thought of right action because you can't just sit and be like, Oh, well, yes, there's a reason why I'm disconnected from this, there's a reason why I don't want to get this done and I don't want to get on the phone with people, etc. It's like Oh, wait, that's silly. That's crazy. Well, what do I want? This is really what this is about. This is really what, you know, my new belief and such is. Now, what's my action? I'm going to choose to take 30 minutes right now and, and make these phone calls. But the, the key to the action is also shifting your vibration, meaning shifting what you feel. Remember, if we're feeling shit, you're exuding shit. You're mm-hmm. vibrating shit. You're going to manifest shit. Mm-hmm. Instead, if we're like, okay, so what would I get to do to, to, uh, to uh, feel good right now? Whether it be take five minutes to meditate, whether it be turn off the music, and, you know my favorite girl, dance around, dance around, <laughs> right? Like have a good time. Hugs and ass grabs. <laughs> mm-hmm, love and ass grabs. There's a reason why that's part of my thing. But it's like even even in, in asking yourself the question, like how could I feel? It's like most of us have not continued to ask ourselves questions to to give ourselves more of what we want. So one of my questions I always ask myself is like, ooh, how can I feel more joy right now? How can I accept more abundance right now? How can I feel more love? And you'll see me even on some of my TV shows, like my arms movie, it's like, I'm just loving myself. I'm giving myself some love. Because I'm the source of my own experience. So if I want more love, I get to give myself more love. I don't wait as a victim of circumstance for someone to come along and give me some more loving. I'm like, I'm just going to love myself right now for me. So, <laughs> so shifting your vibe to then go, okay, so now I'm back in alignment. I'm feeling good. And I'll give you guys a tip that's super powerful. Um, this is something I have my peeps do right away. Is I have, and I think you've heard it go off twice <laughs> during our call, my alarm on my phone goes, dee, 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 and, uh-huh. and I have my phone set every hour from like, you know, early in the morning till late at night that I go to bed or whatever time. And it's like every hour my alarm goes off with a little chime and I have a different message. Like the first one in the morning is like, good morning, day of optimist, like, or beautiful, whatever. Like, you know, what are you, what are you intending for the day? And the next one an hour later is like, you know, then you're fucking fantastical. <laughs> what, what, what's great about you? And, and so everyone's a different message, but the point is every hour my alarm goes off for me to be proactive versus reactive in training my energy. Hmm. So 